Good day, eh? Welcome back to another episode on Element 14 Presents. I'm Wesley Gardner, aka Game Tech, and today we will be taking this wheelchair and motorizing it. When it comes to mobility, not everyone can afford a powered wheelchair or something similar to get them around. Even if it's slowly to inch them forward, to move them forward to a table, or to inch them away from the sun. Sometimes these little things we take for granted. I came up with this idea as a DIY project. So anyone can do it at a reasonable price to help anyone in a wheelchair with their mobility needs. So this unit will be meant for flat ground. So like in a facility or in a house where it's completely flat, they're not gonna be going up and down hills. This chair is meant to go slow. All the parts for this project will be listed on the element14.com website where you can download all the files, all the code, everything to build your own. So let's head it over to the computer, check out the design and get printing. So when I first started, I decided that I would build a little demo station where I could, you know, test things out and uh, go from there. So this one here right up front is my original one that I designed so I could get my whole spacing and everything kind of in line and I knew what I was doing. And as you can see, I made a bunch of different connectors because the tubing on the wheelchair and uh, the conduit were two different sizes. So we kind of had to adjust and make some more there. So originally I wanted a friction mounted wheel for the motor to run on. I originally started with these little itty bitty rollers here. I thought, you know, I was being cool and designing it well. But if you look over to the right here on this big guy over here, this is the guy I ended up going with. So I know the joystick uh, controller here isn't the best design. I will probably adjust this and change this later on. But for right now, it should get us up and moving. It'd be kind of nice if we just, you know, snapped our fingers and all the parts were printed on the bench behind us. We have our parts here on the table. As you can see, there is quite a bit going on here. Now, not all of this stuff is going to be used. As you can see at the back there, there is my failed designs. Uh, so there is a bunch of junk here that isn't really needed. We have our crossbars for underneath the wheelchair. And this here is that mount that we're gonna be able to mount our two Arduino boards with the L298N boards on it. We're gonna make our charge port, our on off switch, and our joystick, and our Arduinos, and that's it. That's all we need to get this going. This is the original demo station that I had built. I'll probably play with it more in the future. Basically, when I first started this project, I was just going to use one Arduino Uno. This to me just made more sense. That way there was uh, less commands going to one and causing uh, glitches in the code. Uh, there was some issues. Uh, so I decided to go with the dual Arduino board. Three quarter inch EMT conduit here. Slap our battery tray here. So there's the battery that we're using. This is a Genesis. Uh, NP712, so that's a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. And then I will put one screw in, rotate it, because you know what? Sometimes you just don't realize that there's uh, that limited amount of space in here. And since we don't have quick releases on the uh, tires of the wheelchair, we're unable to get a drill in on the left side here enough to uh, lock it into place. So I'm just gonna sit this here. We're gonna go here. Okay, and then we're just gonna rotate that upwards. We're gonna get that somewhat straight here. It has a little wiggle room so we can get that aligned into the proper spot here. We're just gonna go right to the back here. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side here. Like I said, I've pre-installed everything and that way we can quickly get this done. The one day you need three hounds just to hold it in place until we get our crossbar on. 
Got that just about right there. That's good. Nice and sturdy now. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and grab our, our wheels here. So it doesn't matter which side we place it on. What we've done so far is we have put everything and mounted it here. The only thing left to mount is the joystick box here. So if I go like this, as you can see, the wheel roller is actually friction mounted to there. And the other side is going to be the exact same up here. So we now have good tension here. Once again, a cheap project that anyone can print and build themselves. So with that being said, I'm gonna start running some cables here. So that should be one cable down. Uh, we should be able to just uh, do the other one. The other one I do believe has a different wiring though for some reason. All right, so we're just gonna tin these guys here. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty good, just like that. We shorten those cables up and they will tuck under there. Okay, so we've got those two taken care of. Next is going to be wiring, doing the controller cables. This is going to be our joystick here. Basically what we're going to do is we are going to connect all the grounds together on the bottom here and then we will just have one ground wire coming off along with the four directions. So on these guys here, there is a little ridge here. So if you look on your uh, unit here, uh, you will see those ridges and that is where you're gonna snap it into place. And hopefully it shouldn't fall out. With that being said, what we're gonna be using for our cable on our uh, joystick is a Cat5 Ethernet cable that I just had laying around. But the reason why we're using this is one, it's already pre-sleeved and it has enough wires for our controller so we can get that run to the Arduino board. I'm just gonna cut and uh, remove some of the sleeve here. We don't need any more of that. I think I will take probably about five or six inches, I think that is. So about five inches there. And uh, I'm gonna use that because we can always trim later on. The brown white is gonna be our ground. Just use one of the directions as the way that we wanna go uh, for our down arrow. And that's where our main cable here is going to kind of go so that way we can actually have that at the base of the unit so i do have a multimeter here so i'm just going to put it on to continuity here and we're just going to listen for the beep here okay we're good and if we go here perfect we have a controller set up so we're gonna put our screws in the hole, like so. Now that should be all right sticking up. I don't mind that. I know some of you guys like the blue stuff, but I'm partial to the green stuff. Not all of us want the blue stuff. Forgot about the boot on the controller there. So then we want this guy here, and we flip it over here, and then we just go ahead and put it on in, and hopefully all the screws stay in place while we mount it in here because then we can get the nuts threaded on the bottom here so like that there we go just gotta get it on there just a little bit and then we can go take the tape off and thread it on tighter and now we have those screws uh, all in i'm just gonna go ahead and tighten them up you don't need to be hercules on these ones now that we have our joystick wire it up. We can now get it mounted onto the wheelchair. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! And there we go, we have our controller set up on the wheelchair there. As you can see, now the cable is coming through here and then it's coming down in behind the XLR and power and down to the final turn here. We have it all wired up here. We've got the L298Ns set up. The only thing we need to do is get the code uploaded to the Arduino Unos. 
uh, power is running right now. Well, it's not running. You have to hit the power button on. And there you go. Motors engage and we have a working setup. Now, the whole wiring, it looks like a lot right here. Trust me, it's really not. Okay, so I have the software set up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the left motor here. It's gonna be this guy right here. So just a quick look here at the code here. I am just setting up the pins here. Basically, the most important thing I found is we want to set the stepper idle to be low. And what we want to do that for is so our L298Ns don't start overheating on us, right? And then we're going to set our left and right, our revolutions per minute, all that kind of stuff here. Um, since it is just a little creeper uh, wheelchair, we, we're not going fast. So I have all the pins set up here. There's not really too much to this. It's very basic. Uh, once you play with a couple of motors, you will get the hang of this really quickly. So make sure to check out using motors with Arduino because it is a lot of fun and you can branch off fairly quickly to projects like this. Okay, so it looks like that is complete. So now we need to do the right motor. There we go. So now we've got our code installed on both of these guys. Now we can actually, what I'm gonna do is get something to raise up the wheels here and I'm gonna power it on and just see if my code's working or not. If not, I'll have to adjust my code a little bit. All right, so one thing I forgot to mention is that I did have to swap the cables from one of the motors over to the other side because, well, you know, the motors are actually rotated, right? So just keep that in mind. It will be on the wiring diagram, so just keep that in mind um, if your wheels are going the opposite way when they should be going the same way. Uh, there is ways we can do this in software, but uh, this is the easiest way is just to swap your cables. So now all we're going to do is we're going to test out the joystick here and make sure our wheels are spinning in the right direction. Now I do have uh, the forwards and reverse uh, inverted and that's just because I wanted to play with it that way. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to power it on and let's go. So we got that guy. We go reverse. So when we go right, what's going to happen is one wheel is going to go one way, the other is going to go the other way, and that way it's going to give a quicker moving pattern there. The thing is, is we can always slow down the stepper motors in the code. Uh, right now, I think I have it set to 150 uh, revolutions per minute. I'm hoping it's going to be enough tension uh, on the wheels and enough torque to actually move me. If not, we'll see how much weight it can hold. This is a great starting point and at a really low cost. I will be redoing the joystick at some point uh, to fit on armrests a little bit better. This does the trick but it's not exactly what I wanted. We need to be able to charge this, guys. What we have here is a 12 volt uh, automatic float charger. This will do 12 volts, uh, 500 milliamps on the charging cycle. So this charger is probably the most cost efficient way to be charging our projects like this, uh, just because the price point and we can adjust it to whatever connection we want. We don't need the, you know, alligator clips on there. And it has a nice indicator for if it's fully charged, it'll automatically shut off. We don't need to do any extra work. So I'm gonna get this taken apart here so we can get this soldered up. All right, so we've got our XLR3 pole here. All we're gonna do is just clip these off. I'm gonna leave basically just a little bit here because we might want to reuse these guys in the future so i'll leave a little bit of wire there so i'm just going to cut it right where it kind of goes into one and we'll do it up there so they nice nicely stay together there here bang and 
something like that anyways that will be more than sufficient and like i said pin one we want to make sure is our ground pin two is going to be our power so now we need to get our sleeve on here first this is what we want to make sure that uh, we're able to screw into the bottom housing here so this will slide together like this and make a beautiful little connector here so all we're going to do now is we're going to slide that through here and there we go that looks pretty darn nice if i don't say so myself and then we're just going to slide that down the cord there all right there we go we now have a charger well almost we got to put this all together now we've got a beautiful new xlr charging cable we are in the off position i have the charger plugged in and either one of two things are going to happen here we're either going to see a charge light indicator on here or that we're charging so green means charging when it's done it's off and then we just have power so let's go ahead and let's test this out there we go we've got this guy charging nothing's powered on everything's working like it should because we have all the power going to the switch so because it's in the off state nothing is being back fed into the arduino at all it's cut off from the battery so there is definitely a few things uh, i would love to change on this build knowing more now that i've progressed to this stage so definitely redesigning the rollers changing the motors to maybe something a little bit more powerful but keeping within that 12 volt range because we're set up here with the motor controller all set up ready to roll it would be a quick easy swap and we would just have to print some new mounts not too hard uh, other than that this chair uh, with the power I, I'm, I'm curious to see how long we will be able to run it, but we have it charging now. I love these XLR connectors. This was a really fun build. I had a lot of fun with that. So with all that being said, let's go for a rip, eh? Thanks for watching everyone, see you next time, and take care, eh?